things that was sorted out was the dashboard. We had a short video on how to get the old finish off, get the new finish on, um, which is what we did with all of this. Deviated a little bit from original. The these were well. The wall wasn't in the best condition and they needed recovering so we used what we've got which was some synthetic silk and it, it works okay it's not original but it works okay with everything else the dash binnacle all of the wood effect painting the scumbling was redone that's my first attempt at doing that and it was all taken apart the other thing that we did was this slightly paler colored piece had to be repainted it was going rusty and all the back of the numbers on the glass had to be repainted because they were all peeling off. Um, all the letters on the knobs there, they were all done. So they're nice and bright again. But mostly all it really needed was the old finish taking off and some fresh finish putting on. In the car, similar story with the door cappings. I've not got the door cards on at the moment because we're still putting those out. Actual wood is all finished and looking pretty nice. At least it would if the lighting was any good. There you go, you can just about see it there. And they're finished with Danish oil uh, rather than any strong varnishes or that sort of thing. It gives a nice finish for what we want. It just brings the wood out without making it look too fake and over restored and it mellows out nicely. We may do it differently in the future, and we'll see how this one lasts, but overall the finish is suitable for what the car is. Door cards, something that everybody ends up needing to do on a car at some point. This one's a bit easier because these door cards aren't complicated shapes, they've not got weird materials, they're very basic and very simple. The one that you see in front of you at the moment is one of the front cards, and this is one of the bigger ones. The materials that the card's made of, the baseboard is just standard plywood, and it's then covered with some cotton wadding and a material that's a sort of a precursor to vinyl which is called Rexine, which is cellulose based rather than um, oil based I suppose it is with vinyl and then of course you've got your standard wool carpet trim on the bottom what I'm going to go over is how they're put together and how easy they are to take apart the door cards on this car we're actually going to be reusing as much of the original material as we can so that it fits in with everything else. We'll probably replace the carpet on the bottom when we get the new carpets in the car. So, the first thing you need to work out with any of the door cars that you've got is how they were put together in the first place. Again, they're nice and simple, so it's not too complicated. No funny shapes, no complicated stitching or anything like that.
This one's water damaged. They very often are, so you can see where the plywood's split and cracked. But when you actually turn it over, as we have here, you can see how it's constructed. One of the first things that you'll notice is the elastic rope. That is for the mat pocket here on the front. So it's quite a simple thing in that all they've done is drilled a hole through there in the plywood and then put a knot in it just to hold it in place. I'll get into a little bit more of what they've done on the other one that we've got. Um, one of the other finishing details is this piping that runs around the edge. This just gives you a nice sharp edge on the final door card. So, rather than me taking this one apart, because I've not got to that point with this one, here's one I prepared earlier. Now, when they put the door cards together, there's a certain order to the way the materials are done. The very first thing, you'll have to pretend this is flipped over so the plywood's up. The very first thing is you find what fixings are most visible. They're the first ones you take out, they were the last ones to go in. On this door card, the first fixings were holding the piping strip, which goes around the edge, and gives you that nice sharp line. Those are these little 6mm fine cut tacks. These are all very rusty. Normally they'd be sort of a blued finish, which is to prevent them from rusting, but they've been on the car that long. They've gone rusty over the years. So, once you've got your two outer strips off, you can then flip it over, and as you see on this one, I'm not sure how well this shows up on the camera, but you've got the tacks that go in on the edge holding this down. So once that's removed, you can then get to the fabric underneath, which is folded over and also tacked. Now, one of the things they helped um, to keep the, everything nice and straight is they cut slots in the piping piece so that the brackets that screw into the door can actually keep a bit of tension on, keep everything nice and secure. So, you've taken all those tacks out. There was about 50 or 60 in the small door card. When you peel the fabric back, you'll get an idea of what layer comes off first. And on these, the first layer to come off is the carpet, which you unfold the edges, which should be glued, but the glue had given up a long time ago. And just here, you can see there's a tack hole. That's because when they put this on, they tack that down onto the wood and then fold the carpet down. That gives you this nice sharp crease here. So you take your carpet away. Your next piece is the pocket. This one's slightly more complicated. You have to untie the knot on the back, which holds the rope in place. It's there. And when you fold that down, again, you have the tacks on the bottom edge that hold it on over this layer. The other thing that they did on this one is just there, there's a little hole. They used a longer tack, which are these ones, and then bend them over. So they, they put that all the way through and then fold it. And that helps hold the elastic in place and stops it pulling through makes sure this is nice. When you've got the pocket off you can then open it up and there is some sewing here because they use a very large machine thread to give you the lining on the pocket and that's really the only sewing on these door cards so there's not really much to worry about. Inside there again to improve the finish make it nicer to handle is cotton wadding. Now on these the cotton wadding is folded in half, standard width, and it's just folded in half and put inside the pocket. 
that's then tacked down onto the board and then of course folded up and then your carpet goes on after that. Once you've got that off, you're down to your very base fabric. This is the largest piece on the door card. Again, just a few tacks on the bottom. All the tacks around the edge we've already removed. And it's just glued on the top edge. The top edge isn't actually tacked, it's just glued. So, peel that one off. And underneath there is more of your cotton wadding. This just means that when the fabric's on, it's got a little bit of softness, it's not too heavy. And underneath this, this is actually still glued on, I've not done anything with this layer yet, you've got the door release here, and that one has a, a felt washer pad. Now this is completely salvageable, this is still in really good shape, so I'll be transferring that over to the new boards when I make them. The one for the wind, uh, window winder, that one doesn't have a pad. I'm not sure why, it just doesn't. And then you're left with a fairly plain board, and it is literally just plywood. And the plywood that it's sat on at the moment is brand new marine ply, 5mm thickness, and that's what we'll use to make the new ones. As long as you copy all the holes in all the locations, and copy your construction of the original door card, you should be able, in theory, to rebuild the whole door card very easily. And then it's just a matter of putting it back on the car the way that it came off. There's a few little interesting details. Like, you can still see the pencil line there. And that's your guidelines so you know where to put this cotton wadding up to. Because the wooden capping on the door card overlaps to that pencil line. So the little bits like that from when these were built by Barker. On the back of the door card you've got your brackets. Now if you were just doing the fabric and you weren't replacing the board you could just leave these in place. Generally speaking if the boards need doing the fabric's gone. These are held on with what I found out the other day are called copper bifurcated rivets and they're they're sort of like a split pin, but they don't split all the way to the head, so they have a little bit of a gap at the top where there's no split, which is for the thickness of the material, and then you just fold the legs back. Already got some on order, very cheap, and you literally just push through to the back of the board. Corrosion and glue makes it difficult to see, but, but yeah, they just push through and then you just fold the legs back and that gives the tension and that's quite enough to hold these on. I mean, these door cards aren't under any real strain. The other thing, all the interior on this one has 568 brown written on the back in pencil, which will be from the factory. Now, to help with construction when it's a new door card as you're dismantling it one of the things that I find very useful is not only a lot of pictures but also a diagram so as you go it doesn't have to be to scale you draw a rough outline of your design and then you just mark on it what I've used is it's anywhere where it's a circle that's a tack and where it's an X that's a hidden tack so that's where there's been a tack underneath the layer. Um, because we're reusing the original fabric, this won't really matter. It conforms to the way it was when it came off. But I also make sure I make note of where the pockets go, where different fittings go, and just any sort of, like here, any sort of sizes I might need to be aware of. It just makes life easier when you put it back together. And that will be a job that we'll be doing well, over the next few days, I guess. Another important consideration when you're doing door cards is layout of your pieces. Now, I'd already done a rough pattern on some paper, so I knew roughly how much material I needed. 
This is just a standard 8x4 board, uh, so it was I think 20 or 30 pounds, and it's enough to do all four door cards. The one thing to bear in mind is the grain of the ply, because if you follow what was done originally, you're more likely to have a long lasting result. If you start messing about with altering grain directions and that sort of thing, you'll probably be okay, but it might cause you problems. So it's best to copy what they did originally. Because both sets of cards, left and right, are just mirrored, and because plywood is a mirrored material, as in you don't need to worry about which side is facing, you can, as with the smaller door cards for the rear, just reverse them if they fit better. So wastage is fairly minimum on this board, which is again what you want, you don't be wasting materials, and this will allow you to get all of your pattern pieces cut out and sorted out. I'll be using the two door cards I've already stripped down that are the better quality, that have the least amount of water damage to provide the pet templates. That way I shouldn't have to do much, if any, reshaping and trimming to make sure everything fits. But there's probably going to be a little bit of it. Next stage is a bit boring. All you do is draw around your pattern pieces, mark where any screw holes and any fixing holes need to be, and then just cut it out with your jigsaw. And then you're done. So that's what we're going to do. Here's one we made earlier. <laughs>